Hello and welcome to today's very special video that I have in store for you which is actually an old members live stream that I am freely releasing to the public and the reasoning for us doing this is just because naturally there are a few people sat on the sidelines debating whether to join chart champions or not so I hope that by the end of today's live stream that you're going to be watching you'll be able to see the efforts that I put into producing each and every live stream that I make for you all and on top of that the quality educational content that you will be receiving thus you'll be able to to make an informed decision on whether you want to join our trading community uh, so I hope that you thoroughly enjoy this video and I will catch you at the end of it uh, for a little bit more information if you would like uh, so yeah sit back and relax cheers thank you bye Hello everybody, I hope that you are doing very well and welcome to this evening's Contenders live stream. Uh, you know, I really want to give that microphone drop it out. Are you ready to rumble? <laughs> I'm really looking forward to tonight's live stream as I know many of you are too. Uh, being part two of the Parallels live stream and I have just really, really enjoyed uh, teaching you all about Parallel Channels because since last week, there's clearly been uh, had a big influence and I've seen, noticed like everybody like using channels in their tra trading and obviously this is just today in the group we're seeing people posting channels people posting channels people posting channels and it's really 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 good um you know and obviously because these are profitable trades as well so that's even better but I like to like see that people are are really using the channels as I've taught and uh, yeah, it's all coming together. And now today we have part two of the channel. So it's good to see that you're all learning. And um, yeah, that, that's obviously the objective. So <laughs> uh, good to see. And uh, yeah, today we have part two two okay let me just double check everything seems to be fine yes 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 all audio is brilliant uh so yeah as with the way that i sort of run this as normal now i will keep all questions to the end and then i'll run through all the questions at the end it just keeps the flow better um and so just for an overview of what we'll be doing tonight okay so we'll start off with eos chart of the week and this is uh going to be a bit of a funny one it was a it was a long position by the way on eos um but if you're in the like the champions live stream on sunday you'll know i was looking to short this um but i went into a long here and then for a swing trade uh in my mind and then this is where my day trading brain just like totally took over the trade and you'll see how i like totally reversed out of this idea but i'll cover <laughs> eos first okay and then i'll go into uh trading channel tra the parallel channels part two OK, and then next week will uh, be the final part of the channels where I'm going to go over part three. So as you can tell, there is so much on channels. Um, yeah, so this is part two and uh, maybe part four. I'm not too sure. I hopefully we'll finish it next week if I'm honest. But yeah, there is still more to come next week. OK, um, yes, I, I totally agree, Chris, like everybody growing. Yeah, Chris's comment growing, getting better to know each other. You know, it's it is really, really, really good. <laughs> So yeah, it's brilliant. Um, and it, I, I love it as well because everyone's like a family. It's always, it is, I just really love it. Um, so yeah, moving on uh, to oh uh, EOS. I've accidentally put engine. I'm so used to trading engine coin. <laughs> this is meant to say EOS. <laughs> um, th that's my engine coin brain kicking in there. Uh, so apologies. But, but here we go with EOS. Okay. So um, just for just so you're aware, by the way, that I tr I trade this on Bitmex. Okay, so Bitmex. Although, as you can see here, oh no, sorry, this is actually on the uh, this was taken from the uh, uh, Bitmex chart. But I also like always when I'm trading on Bitmex alts, I'm always referring to the Binance charts. Okay, more so. <laughs> uh, I just really prefer trading off of the Binance charts. Uh, you know, the prices are give or take a few sats. They're obviously not picture perfect exact, but you give or take a few sats. And I, I prefer just so you're all aware. I prefer actually charting on on Binance charts, uh, although I'm trading it on BitMEX just for uh, aware. OK, but basically what I was looking for here on this uh, long. OK, so this was a long waiting for the support. So obviously we had had this extended move to the upside. No way I'm buying it at the top here. No way. OK, so I was waiting for that drop and I will just highlight on this chart exactly what I was. My original plan was so I originally really wanted to move up to here. OK, and I just wanted to see this move up and short here. I really wanted to short here and play it back down to be honest okay uh but then i decided in the end to to basically try and get into a long from here and at least take it up to here on take profit one and then i was going to reassess the trade do we get rejected there then i would close my short uh, close my long and open a new short okay or do we in fact not hold that level at all and just go straight through it then i had take profit two at the weekly take profit three at the at the secondly secondary weekly which is about 20 percent 
Okay, as you're going to see, this this in the end has come down to entry really, and, and <laughs> well, I'll cover it. We'll we'll show you what's happened because it's not been really too great, if I'm honest. It basically was a long entry, and it was originally planned for sort of you know week long trade. Okay, uh, from daily and hourly support together on top of the golden pocket. So the support was definitely there, and it did get a bounce. So we got about three and a half percent bounce. So gains were to be had. Um, obviously not twenty percent gains, but three percent gains. So we did have a bounce from this level. So it's pretty nice. Wide stop loss, okay. This is just because I didn't want to have my my stop loss just below the low. I uh, placed it down below a, lo a lower lower position, okay. So obviously, you know, I, th I think you're starting to realise that when you have wider stop losses, you have to have smaller position sizes. So you work out your position sizes from your stop loss percentage, basically. So you're always using different amounts. Um, so when you are trading with a you know, you can trade with a 20% stop loss if you if you wanted to. Uh, but obviously, then that means your position sizes are obviously very small. Um. It's all comparative to your account. What's small to me, mate? You know, x, x, x You know, small is is you can't define small because each person's accounts a different size. But um, you know, you get the idea. Uh, but basically, yeah, take profit at the local high, which was this high for me. Not too local, I guess. But this this high here at the not the double top high I'm referring to. This high here, okay. Where I'm just searching for liquidity, and uh, yeah. So basically, take profit one was there, okay. Where the high, um, where I first wanted to look for a short, okay, and we'll only continue with the long if it doesn't reject. I did believe that we were going to reject, but nevertheless, I wanted to take the long up to that level, okay. So second take profit at the at that secondary weekly, and then the take profit at the top, okay. Um, so then results of how this has gone. Um, this is what we had today. So this was the results of what kind of happened. I will flip over to the chart, but as kind of wrote when I was updating this this morning, it did, and I posted this in the group as well, you know, we're coming up to this golden pocket resistance, which was also the top of this parallel channel. And this is for me where I uh, love to manage my trades. <laughs> so although um, I entered this of, of the expectations of holding it for a midterm trade, I, I kind of, uh, my day trader got the better of me and I ended up taking 50% 50% profit at the top of this move, okay, and uh, I actually got stopped on the last 50% also in slight slight profits, but I moved my stop loss up and this, as you're going to see on the flip over the chart, has since this photo, which was uh, 4, oh no, 2, sorry, uh, 230, has, has since dropped down, so um, yeah, it was it was a profitable trade, I guess, but yeah, this for me is where I over, I guess successfully, but I like to over manage my trades, <laughs> so yeah, it was in the end, I'll, I'll flip over the chart now and show you what's going on here on EOS, basically. Okay, so what we can see here, okay, so what we can see is really, really nice confluence on, on the original idea, okay, so on the original idea, and this is just perfect examples. Today, Bitcoin has been channeling, channeling perfectly, and here we have EOS channeling perfectly, so just really nice examples for what I'm going to be teaching today, I guess, but um, what we could see here is obviously this high, okay, so we had a high, okay, and what did we have for confluence? We had from fib from low to high, we had the golden pocket, okay, and obviously when we're looking at it here, what we can see is this top line is the, uh, obviously this the 61865, we had that golden pocket on that horizontal level, okay, so we did see pretty perfectly a drop down into the golden pocket, and if I just remove those fibs a second, just so you can see they were there, the channel, the channel, the channel, the channel came in, okay, and if we just move this up to the connecting point here, we can see perfect touch, perfect touch, perfect touches. OK, and uh, I guess I should adjust this now. It's kind of moved it out a little bit, but you can see the perfection of this channel today. Uh, we were literally going from high to low to high to low to high to midpoint to bounce back up to the high to midpoint. You cannot get any more better more perfect than this. This is absolutely perfect, okay? And this in itself, okay, if you're trading the channel for what it is, okay, gave you a short, okay, to midpoint, another entry on a short, down to midpoint, down to the bottom, up to the top, which is then, okay? So then we're taking a fib from the high to the low. And this was for me where I closed out 50% this morning, uh, was then up to the 618 top, okay? Lower high, lower high, midpoint, midpoint okay and then what were we coming down to now we're coming back down to that horizontal level okay so you know we've got now another confluence of uh the channel basically uh, so we can just appreciate how perfect this channel literally is okay because every single point is just absolutely perfectly respected um so yeah i've been i'm not in the long anymore so i am i'm not in this long okay so what we could say is expectations going forwards of this okay and this is what i'm going to be covering in today's lesson of when do we look too long something that's coming out of a downward sloping channel okay what i would want to see okay is a breakout of here okay and then a close above this horizontal level so what can we see here okay this is a really key pivotal horizontal 
Okay, so we look here, support, 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 resistance, resistance, resistance. Now, just breaking up here, for me, you know, let's say it does happen, that just breaking up here is not enough. Why? Because this is lower high, lower high, lower high, lower high, lower high, lower high, lower high. What do we want to see in this channel? Even if it breaks to the upside, it's not enough. It needs to break out of the channel and then it needs to take this high. Okay, and that is where I would re-enter the long now. And I would obviously re-enter it higher, but I would re-enter that long still only with that first objective target but nevertheless that would be then a change of structure and for me an entry or we're looking for uh, quite a drop down i think at this point if we if we lose this support yeah you could see like an, another entry what around three five around three five region but really we're either waiting for this to reclaim some old resistances flipping to the support or it's, it's very likely gonna you're gonna get a much better entry okay if this doesn't hold then yeah you could see this drop down heavy okay so uh i'd, I'd be trading my keeping my eye alerts basically at this point because i'm not in the trade anymore just keeping an alert on the golden pocket here do you close above or do you get rejected again i guess keep an alert there keep an alert for around 3540 to see a reaction coming in around 3540 okay or if not then uh yeah I, I would be cautiously looking for a new position on eos if i'm honest okay i'd be very very cautious when something pop, pop, goes up like it did so if you look on the daily when something goes up like this okay obviously it can you know bull flag continuation but if it does start to drop down and lose those supports it, it can retrace you know just as quickly as it went up goes up really quickly retraces it you know all so uh yeah just be aware of that although you do have the potential for bull flag continuation i would just be aware of that 618 right now it's clearly the, the resistance on the chart okay Ooh, I'm speaking quite fast. It's just because I have a lot to get through. Apologies if I am speaking too fast for you all this evening. <laughs> um, but yeah, there's a lot to get through. And I'm also just really excited. I'm really happy. I should have filled that up before I began. My mistake. Um, so yeah, as you can see here, we were looking for a midterm. Took 50% at the top here. Trailed stop loss up into profits. And yeah, obviously that has dropped down since here and stopped me out. What I'll show you, by the way, is... So this is obviously looking at the... the, the um, here we are looking on Binance. But if we do flip across to BitMEX, uh, it did perfectly bounce off the daily. Okay, So what we can see here is really, really perfect daily levels. And, and this is where, you, undeniably, these levels are just the best, aren't they? We can see daily resistance. Okay, We, we got zero closes above. Daily, what is then support. Look how perfect the bounce was. Okay, So we're looking at daily resistance, daily support, bounce to the to the exact tick okay where do you reject okay we're talking about two sats two sats but you literally got the move from the bottom daily up to the top daily um so you cannot get any more perfect than that you literally cannot get any more really you can't get any more perfect so that's obviously a move down to the bottom of the daily move up to the top of the daily literally like range bound trading this is also what i'm going to cover today of how can you work out when a channel's forming so let's say when you have two major levels like this a major daily a major weekly now major another major daily i would prefer this to be a weekly and a weekly you know just because getting you know those are even stronger and a monthly is stronger again like if you have two monthly levels then obviously they're the strongest but this is where you can predict a range forming if you're bouncing off of a, a daily and then rejecting at a daily well what's to stop you just looking now for this to range okay and then you're either waiting for the range to break or the range to you know at one time it's going to break but until then if you're stuck between two major levels you can get a, a, an advantage on the competition of predicting that you're going to get the third bounce here okay and you are in fact going to end up being range bound okay but i'm going to be covering that a little bit later in the stream but that is basically what we're looking at um okay cool so moving on from last week so i will quickly um uh, i won't bother going through those so we all got to slide number 14 okay so this is where we picked up from last week okay so uh, yeah, parallel channels. <laughs> um, where can, what can we say here? That I, I've obviously received quite a few questions from people during the week, uh, which does help me as well as a you know as a mentor now. It's like from pe from receiving questions, you know, I also then you know because you know because I've been doing this for so long now. I've obviously been trading many years. It, it kind of becomes second nature, and it's kind of like a weird one. Like you know, obviously I'd never done teaching before, but you know, as coming into like now mentoring and uh, from just doing this, it's kind of like for me, trading is like the back of my hand. I don't really think about these things. Um, and then obviously when you teach it, there's obviously some questions that people are going to be remaining with. And then when people ask the questions, it makes me realize, oh yeah, so this is what I need to think in my mind, which is kind of, at first I might not have an answer. Um, you know, for an example, I need to, because I'm just so naturally doing everything, just without sort of thinking, then I have to think of these are the reasons and then it helps also with the content so um 
this is one of the questions that I received a lot, probably about five times, <laughs> of can you get upward sloping channels uh, in a sideways channel? And, and you absolutely can. So basically, um, this is just a, a, a bit of a question that I've received I wanted to add in here on slide 14 so it wasn't here but what we're looking at is upward sloping channels within a higher time frame sideways channel so this is really really normal to to get and you'd have seen this on Bitcoin recently where you um you know as you go as you range from high to low of your channel okay I'm going to slow it down <laughs> so as we range from high to low of the channel Okay, naturally, as you start to range then from the low of the channel to the high of the channel, you can definitely expect this to start to form an upward sloping, uh, upward sloping channel to your obviously target. So if you are longing at the bottom of the target, let, let's remember, we are taking profits in the middle or potentially closing. And remember back from last week, this all depends on the time frame of the channel. If you're if you're looking at a big channel then obviously you are closing the trade in the middle okay but if it's just a day trading channel then you take profits aim for the top generally speaking okay so what we can see here is from the bottom of the channel we come up to the midpoint of the channel we come down for a low what does that give us that gives us our three anchor points anchor point one anchor point two anchor point three we can put on this parallel channel okay what we're we aiming for the mid to the top and what do you get here you hit the middle of the channel you reject you come up again you know, just like we saw in EOS, if, if you're two sats off or, or like one dollar off, um, it, it's always worth, personally, I would always front run a level, okay? Uh, you, you'll have seen recently with like times of Icon and different other few coins that, you know, if you, if you don't start, if you keep not trying to front run things by one or two dollars, then you do miss out on trades occasionally. So I like to front run anyway, but um, here we can see uh, an example of pretty perfect touch, if we're honest, at, at the top of the resistance, okay? And then we obviously got our rejection. So as right here, when price hits the bottom of the channel, we look to long to the midpoint. And at this point, you wouldn't have an upward sloping channel, but you would just be trading from the bottom to the midpoint. But then as you go from bottom to midpoint to form this kind of, uh, this is actually a 618 retracement, by the way, from low to high. 618 curving little bottom here. Okay, so it's a one hour chart. So we have four hours of a little curving bottom. Okay, making its way back up. That's where you can put on that parallel channel, We're expecting this to hold one, two, three. You then have the midpoint take profit of this new channel okay so this is when you could let's say that we're in a very big daily channel so this is a sideways daily and then within the sideways daily channel we have a new upward sloping day trading channel yeah so then you could be in multiple positions at the same time if you want to get complex with it all but um you know here we really look be looking for our long up to the midpoint and you see the rejection that happens rejection and then long up to the top of the channel and a rejection what must i say Seeing a long higher wick like this, do you, do you really, th I mean, I'll, I'll put the question, do you think this is a bullish or bearish wick? Okay, we can see it got continuation, but I would always see in this not be expecting continuations to the upside. If you see a massive upwards wick like this going through, okay, so let's just really highlight what we go through here. We go through all of these highs. So all of those highs, so you basically take all that liquidity and then you come straight back below. I'd, I'd always be looking for a bearish scenario after this obviously we do in fact get one more move up one more move up to the middle of this parallel channel and uh if you have a memory like mine uh this and this was all taken live by the way uh you can always tell it's live because it's got the countdown timer but this was taken live back on the 28th of august you can go back and see what happened here this was a, a short entry for me and and as you all remember this this ended falling down literally the next 30 minutes we saw a drop here from 10,240 down to uh the low 9,000 so we saw about a a, a ten a one thousand dollar drop uh, and and it was all from trading this parallel uh, channel okay that's why i was in that short okay and then it obviously fell down very heavily and it was all from day trading this channel really um and so this is why i love channels um really really love them but yeah that was just a first starting off slide to answer some of those questions of, of can you see these sort of upward sloping channels within a sideways channel absolutely you can okay and yeah chris white with the answer that is a bearish looking candle okay so if you ever see upwards it's really when you go through highs as well so if you go through highs okay uh with a really high upper wick like that is bearish okay the same if you see a long lower wick like this onto support it's bullish okay so long lower wick onto the bottom of support here then you would expect a rise and you obviously rise to the midpoint here and you obviously then can see support support flipping to resistance you come back down again to the midpoint of to the bottom okay so you can see this is really really range bound by the way and you obviously here get another touch on the bottom up to midpoint higher low higher high here but 
high upper wick is giving you a bearish vibe to this move and then in the end this does in fact fall down quite heavily okay um so yeah that was just starting starting uh starting off so um going on to funnily enough I, I never had planned eos what i covered just two minutes ago but this was one that i planned from the 28th of giving you the examples of how can you get an idea of a, a range is going to form before it's even formed okay so this is something that i'm always looking for so i'm always looking to try and get in early you know i, I find us if you want to be a successful trader you need to really get in uh, before the herd you know i guess you want to get in really before everyone else starts identifying patterns i think this is something that you're going to see as you like progress as a trader that's you know especially if you look on twitter and you see uh a hundred people posting the same chart you can you can guarantee they're gonna there's no guarantees in trading let me rephrase that you, you're likely gonna think they're wrong so you really want to be ahead thinking of the crowd okay so i love to find these early ranges uh because essentially we have a step up on the competition okay maybe other you know i don't actually find many people trading these but you know when you do uh you know if you can get an early head start and, and get into a long of envis envisaging a range to form okay then you obviously you're ready for your long here up, up to resistance for example okay but uh, going back to what i want to really tell you is early signs a range could form okay so how could you get an early indication that the range has formed eos gave it away a little bit but what do you see originally starting here you see resistance 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 broken and that is a back test of resistance turning into support we've obviously gone through sr flips in detail on a previous live stream but here we see a resistance flipping into support okay so what do you do and this is a daily level so i want to just emphasize we're not just taking this off of a fibonacci it has to be as it has to be a high time frame uh horizontal and for me high time frame horizontals are obviously our daily preferably weekly or monthly levels okay monthly is the strongest okay and all quarterlies quarterly levels uh obviously your number one uh quarterly then you're going down to your monthly then you're going down to your okay weekly and then daily dailies are still strong let's not get it wrong but obviously the higher the time frame the, the, the stronger it is but dailies are still 100 percent respected well so they're fine um and then what we see here is a move from the old resistance flipping into support so we can see that we've seen a support coming in at our daily level okay from support coming in at the daily level what are we seeing up here a, a daily resistance okay this is on the 30 minute chart by the way 30 minute chart remember that but we are seeing a move from the bottom up to the top and rejections 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 see all these up higher wicks this is forming uh i really telling you uh especially when you see signs like this so especially as you see like high wicks like this and you just see closes but you know wicks above wicks above wicks well you know that's not bullish okay so as you see the high upper wicks you, you can tell you get an early indication that resistance is holding uh every cell is getting met okay uh this is a sign especially then really you would be cautiously here you'd be cautious and then as you come back in and close that's your sign that it's held okay so you'd be cautiously uh looking for shorts at this point personally i'd be cautiously looking for a short and then my confirmation would be you could say there's a few signs of confirmation here that the resistance is holding first is that you come down below that low you make a lower low okay obviously if you're moving down like this it's not bullish okay descending triangle-esque it's not bullish if you take the low and then on top of that uh what would be my number one would be this simple fact here that we are closing back within that potential channel that we're looking to form so you see here price closes back under the resistance line which is indicates the resistance is holding strong and could short to the middle of the last move so what we what we would say here is we could potentially then be looking to short up to the 0.5 fib okay or just the middle of this range from high to low middle of the range would be here wouldn't it and then you also see on that middle of the range what do you have you have old uh, you have a, a reason to look for here for a short even if you're going down to the bottom that you'd still be looking at that mid range as a pivotal area because of the old price action that's gone in here so you can get early signs a range may form there's never a guarantee i just really want to there's never ever 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 a guarantee in trading you have to remember that it's all about probabilities but what we can say is we have probabilities in our favor when we're using this type of technical analysis but there is never a guarantee but uh you know we're, it's all you know you want all these confluencing factors you, you do have the probabilities in your favor so um you know if you have a move from major support okay so major support up to major resistance and the price starts to turn and back close under the resistance then it appears the resistance is holding and you could short back down to the bottom of the range which will in turn start to create your channel and this is what happened on bitcoin by the way so what we would see here is from our low 
we've built seen a rejection coming in at the high so what would we be looking for we'd be looking for something like this to start forming wouldn't we okay we'll be looking for that to start forming because we've seen an early sign of support and resistance coming in at a major level so there's obviously a clear imbalance so what are you looking for here there's there's a clear imbalance between demand and supply so okay you have a, an excess of supply up here and a, a, a demand coming down here so what happens when you have a you know a supply and demand you 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 move sideways in your channel until you find you know a fair value and then you start to find your value within this area okay so that's how you get these channels forms just you know until supply and demand eventually then runs out and you you move on to your next levels but that's why you form these sort of trading ranges okay um see that's an early sign of how you can predict uh get in on, an, on a third touch okay because remembering back we have to wait for these sort of third touches but obviously an upward sloping is very difficult okay obviously you could have a fib in here and you know sideways is a lot easier because horizontals are always stronger than a trend line as well so uh horizontals are number one uh but nevertheless uh, yeah a bit of a bad example i wouldn't predict a, a, an upward sloping or downward sloping uh obviously i'd, I'd trade a fib, fibonacci from here which it did hold by the way but um yeah still uh, sideways channels are easier to predict not upward sloping I'd, I'd just mention that while i'm at it okay um so moving on uh to slide number 16 so um here what we can see oh so this was an update of this channel by the way so this was our previous of of you know early sign it could form and then this was live uh, picture of, of it actually did form so what we can see here is this is where we were looking originally at it okay so we were looking originally at it after this okay oh no back here so this is where we were looking so there's the resistance that flipped into support and that was our coming down okay so you can see it's not perfect we we know in trading nothing's going to be perfect but we can see it ended up in a really nice range okay so what is this a deviation from the range but we did go from high the signs of the breakdown were there midpoint actually didn't hold in the end and you went straight down uh what did you do so let's just highlight here what we done uh really perfectly we we took out the long lower wick okay and what did we do here take that liquidity and run it back up inside the channel <laughs> just so perfect just so so perfect uh what do you then start doing here you start range bound okay what we can see here is that's your high okay and really you get an sr flip there so a little bit before the top so you always want to look at price st price structure and then what do we do we run up to the top we come back down to the bottom form a wick form a low what do we do here we take the low and then come right back up to the top okay back to the top that is a very big deviation very big really big upper wick very very bearish as you know 26th of august remember the 26th of august because why was i shorting bitcoin recently by the way um I was like shorting Bitcoin recently it was because of my uh, uh, remembering what happened on the 26th of the pump and gave it all back and obviously in the end led to that dump but um, yeah that's uh, what I just wanted to mention there okay so we obviously saw that quick move to the upside and then in the end look how perfect look how perfect so although it didn't happen here or here what did we have coming in at this point we did have that midpoint of the channel support perfectly support perfectly resistance 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 high upper wick just real perfect isn't it it really is okay so we can then see the middle of the channel coming in here perfectly back up to the top resistance 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 support resistance coming down to the bottom of our channel back up for resistance back up for support resistance high or low high upper wick and if you have a good memory then you will know that this picture was uh in fact this example here okay so a bigger view again this was all live uh when i was doing this but this was where i was entering the short and shortly after literally within the uh an hour or two um uh, we dropped down to around 9300 so this channel was absolutely perfect and you can start to see now how you can get those early signs and early signs from back on the 24th and then you have a, a whole week nearly of trading within that channel okay and it's 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 i said this earlier to everyone i, I don't like to say trading is easy because one it can come across as very I, you have to remember i've been doing it a long time i don't, I don't want to say it's easy but um you know if you start really putting in like hours and really practicing then you start to like to recognize these early and then you'll start to get the you know an edge basically on the competition and really you are trading against other people so you do want to win <laughs> and uh, you know anyway um so yeah we can just see how that early sign of it forming did in fact form absolutely perfectly well i want to say yeah, again there's nothing perfect in trading we did see deviations from the low and deviations from the high but nevertheless coming back in you could take your longs 
coming back in, taking your shorts, and you can see coming back in, back testing, move up, coming back in, back testing here, move up, coming back in, back testing, move down. Okay, so it's like deviations from the range, but nevertheless, overall, you are very contained within this price. Okay, and that was obviously from a daily resistance to a daily support, really gave you a heads up that you could start to see a range here. Okay. Uh, so moving on, uh, moving on to number 17. So this is obviously looking at our partial rises and partial declines. Um, so although here we've we've not got a channel, <laughs> it's all part and parcel of when you're trading any sort of patterns. So basically a partial rise or a partial decline is just giving you an idea that, that let's say, for example, this was a sideways channel, although we're obviously not looking at a channel here. Let's just say we were looking at a sideways channel. If you do a partial rise or a partial decline, so this is obviously a partial decline, that would be giving you an idea that it's it's starting to become bullish. If price isn't coming down to the bottom of your range, then you could have uh, you know it's it's not guarantee because you just could just come back up to the top and and then come back down. So you do want to remember it's not uh, a long until you then close above the channel really, or at least take out a high. Okay, so where would you be saying here? Or well, that would be our high, wouldn't it? So you could say and like really wait if you wanted to that instead of back testing here, you want to see the high taken out and then that would be a long entry. Okay, so you'd have to wait a little bit because this is still a lower high, lower high, lower high, lower high even here. So you do want to see that take out a high. Um, basically, you know, for a little bit of extra confirmation. But yeah, here, partial declines and partial ranges are early signs that uh, one uh, that you could be breaking out of a range to the up or downside. OK, so if you start to see price in a range and it doesn't feel doesn't come down to the bottom and only retraces slightly and then you're all the way back up to the top again, where well, you would say bulls are in control. There is there's more demand coming in at higher prices, which obviously is how you push a market up. So, um, yeah, this is one way of you know, having a little inkling that uh, price could potentially not be uh, breaking to the downside. If you see a partial uh, decline, then you would be looking for a breakup. And the same, if you this didn't reach the top of the parallel, then you would be saying, mm, OK, we've seen weakness coming into the market here, potentially. Um, we've not made it to the top of the channel. We'll be looking then for this to break down or you would favor a breakdown. I would wait for the confirmation, but you could have uh, favorable odds, I guess, um, of, of that trade. OK. So moving on, <laughs> uh, moving on here. So what did I want to let one second, please? Uh, oh, I hope no one saw that. <laughs> so here this is OK. So this is our daily range, by the way, on Bitcoin. And this was just a, a little overview that I wanted to do. So here we can see of, of, of again, just like giving an outline of, the, of these channels. So here we see old resistance. It's all, all really about support and resistances. <laughs> but here we see old resistance flip to support. OK, and I, th this is a question that I also am asked a lot of. How are we really looking for um, where to take the top of the channel, where the bottom? So I'd always if I just had a blank chart, if we didn't see this on the left here, I would draw my channel like this. OK, so we are for the sake of example, imagining this isn't here a second. OK, and I would take my my channel from the top candle close to the bottom candle closes here. And my channel would run like that. So if I couldn't see this price action here and I was just looking at this other range, I'd go from the candle close to the candle close. OK, and then you can see here, actually, it does go quite nicely. OK, because we don't touch the bottom of this range again, <laughs> by the way. But um, yeah, I, I would generally be looking at the uh, top of the channel is marked by the by the highest candle close and not just a candle close. You do want to see it respected. So if we just had a candle close here, but then it never touched you know, you never got a touch here, then I would, well, I probably just wouldn't be classing this as a channel. It's just a different type of pattern. You don't always have channels. But um, yeah, you want to see a candle close really, and then a respect of that. So that's giving you a, a hint of it, of a range bound. And uh, the reason why I haven't taken the candle close from the candle closes here, although arguably it's better, to be honest, but it's because we had a resistance that flipped to support and support again perfectly. So we can say the clear demand is coming in at 9,100. And there's a clear, um, you know, a clear supply coming in at around 13,000 more or less. OK, so then we're range bound within 9,000 to 13,000, uh, you know, trying to work out what's a fair price at the moment. So, um, yeah, that's basically how we kind of decipher in a range. You're, you're either looking for a really, you know, this is really nice SR flip on Bitcoin. OK, or you're looking for candle closes. And generally we're, we are looking, at, especially on sideways ranges, you'll see me take it from the wicks a lot. Uh, and I would I would say do both. So take it using wicks. OK, and then take it using closes and see what looks nicer. So, OK, so it's not a hard rule. You don't always have to go from wicks. 
okay so you can you would just see what looks best and here if you're going from a wick here it doesn't make total sense okay the higher it'll move so the candle close respect okay and then this is a deviation that's a deviation isn't it we haven't deviated from the bottom side okay so uh basically i'll just read through this okay uh so old resistance flip to support to create the bottom of the channel top of the channel is marked by the highest candle close here and then respect is giving us the confirmation we're in a range okay so trade would be taken from the bottom of the range and you'd be looking for the midpoint because this is a daily range you would long here and you would be closing out at the midpoint really because it's a big range this is a big move from 9100 up to about you know, 11,000. That's a very big move. Uh, you wouldn't be longing 9,000 and aiming really for 13K. You would be looking at the middle and then do you break above it? Then then you couldn't aim for the top, okay? So, yeah, I, on a big range like this, I wouldn't be aiming for the top. I would aim for the middle and then reassess the trade. Maybe you go straight through like you do here and then, you know, in this time, I'd be thinking, okay, you know, yeah, we can aim up for, for 13K, for example, but, you know, it's take it one step at a time. Um, so as price closes above the midpoint, a long trade would be taken. So you would take the long here. Obviously, we know it never hit, but you would still take the long up to midpoint. What do we actually see here? Well, you obviously had that really nice trend line in the end, uh, which has rejected, rejected, rejected. You also had a 618 coming in here. So you had a you had a lot of reason to be rejected here. So this is when you have to use other technical analysis with it. Like there was definitely a reason to be rejected here. You had trend line resistance and uh, Fibonacci resistance, golden pocket all coming together. So there, and, and, and the way the move was so extended, you know, you have, always have to be very cautious of a, a straight up move like this. Um, so yeah, that was for me a, a nice trade. But uh, here we can see a, a partial rise. So when you get the partial rise, I think in the end here you have come down to the candle closes. So in the end you come down to the candle close. You, you don't touch 9-1 again. Okay, so here you have a, uh, a, a a partial rise. So with that partial rise, it's confirmed when you close back above the middle. So you would be closing out of your trade either at the breakdown. Or you'd basically break even trade as you move up here. You'd either trail your stops into profits or just keep your trade at break even. You wouldn't be looking for a loss at this point after reaching um, reaching like the middle of this channel again. You would be... Uh, moving stops to break even. You wouldn't take a loss in this trade. But uh, nevertheless, you obviously get stopped out. OK, so partial rise is confirmed when you break back into the middle of the lower range or the lower half of the range. OK, so that's when we'd be saying, yeah, this is a confirmed higher or, or partial rise when you're back down here. OK, you wouldn't be obviously looking for long for a, uh, you know, positions when you've seen that partial rise. OK, so after the partial rise, OK, a short can be taken with a close below uh, the midpoint and aim for the range low. So after we've seen a partial rise and you've come back and you've back tested it, you'd look again for a long sorry a short back down to the bottom because after this partial rise you'd expect this low to come and again you don't actually hit the low uh, but what do you do what do you see some reasons why you don't hit the low again here obviously you're seeing a few different things like here and obviously in the end you, you come down you do come down you don't hit the exact bottom and we've done something like this now so um yeah, this is obviously just a few signs of, of things I'd be looking out for, partial partial rises. So this is really, so what is this really indicative of? Indicative of? This is so uh, normal of a really uh, con big consolidation range. If you start to see partial rises and partial declines, well, well, what's happening here? Okay, so what is happening is price is really constricting, isn't it? So uh, it's kind of constricting in. If you're seeing partial rises, partial declines, well, it, price is just getting closer and closer to an apex before you get a larger break. But um yeah, this is obviously not so much a sideways channel anymore. It's more uh, more of a triangle pattern, I would say. But, you know, in the time we were looking at this, uh, and it did break down, by the way. So we did come down to around 9,300 in the end. Uh, so about $200 from the bottom of the channel. But you did see those candle closes and they were hit. So, um, yeah, this is where we could say really the, the best channel. In fact, it's, it maybe not free from this SR flip, but this, this close. OK, because we did move down and touch that close and get a reaction to the upside. OK, so there's a little bit of discretion to be had here um, that maybe now the, the range of low is, is from these candle closes. OK, because you see exactly the, the candle highs here and the candle lows here. That That's a nice confluence as well. OK, uh, but moving on. OK, so uh, oh, this is what I love about channels, by the way. So this is one of my favorite things about channels. And you will notice that uh, in my charts that I run through on, you know, daily basis sort of thing that um, I don't ever leave the channels on. So if you look here on the daily, the reason. So this is I just want to explain why you don't see uh, what I'm about to say, because I have a, another trading view account where I will never, ever, ever delete 
a channel okay where when i've let, had it on my chart unless it's getting too messy and it's just not uh, any more respected then i'd obviously remove it because it would be cluttering my chart but um the reason why my charts are always clean is because i'm obviously doing like daily lessons with people or just like running through different ta um you know i'm always just deleting everything uh, but generally if, if you're on your own trading view you wouldn't wouldn't keep deleting everything okay but the reason why my charts are always deleted is, is just because um there's always a question coming in or something like this and i'll have to delete everything so this is why it's best to have a, a, a trading view account where you're not always deleting things just to clear things up because i'm about to say never delete things basically <laughs> so um channels when broken always should be left on the chart okay until you can see they're not being respected okay because an old channel will be broken and come back as a new channel okay but i just want to show you before you just keep that in mind while i talk you through this here so here we had a sideways channel okay so this is a sideways channel that had formed you broke out of that sideways channel okay so sideways channel broken to the upside okay so sideways channel is formed after a rise in price so if you rise and then consolidate in a range you do expect continuation what to the upside because of the continuation pattern so if you if you come up into a channel you expect it to go sideways and continue up so sideways range is formed after a rise in price thus one could favor trading longs in the range though i would personally trade long short long short long short long okay but you could favor just longing mm, taking profits longing taking profits longing if you don't want to short this then you know you don't have to because you would favor a breakup okay but nevertheless then what happens here so your channel you see how perfect this is by the way like channel here formed you come up and you form a high where do you go from the high you went from a high a rejection you come back in exactly into the old channel and this way you wouldn't remove it so you come back into the old channel the exact low of your old channel and uh you people following me would know i traded it well <laughs> uh, but i keep doing that uh, here we obviously come back into the low of this channel okay low of the channel um so this is just a, an example of old previous smaller term time frame uh channel acts as a support as price dips back into it okay so then we go from low to high to a low of the old channel here and then you can see up to uh in the end around a midpoint an sr flip here back down to the low so what's this a partial rise you come back to the low and find support and this is where we get our channel so you see here i'm taking it from the candle close to the candle close okay so not these wicks not these wicks i'm going from close to close okay and then what do we have from the close we come up to the top okay so short top of the range as this is a smaller range i would trade from side to side eg short the top take profits in the middle and ultimately aim for the bottom because it's a one hour chart okay so we're we're going from top take profits close instead of if this was a daily chart would be aiming for the middle but because it's a smaller range day traders let's say middle take profits bottom okay so long from the bottom of the range taking profits in the middle and up to the top so what do we do here bottom middle Re retracement top retracement high what do you see here an sr flip so resistance flip to support moving up again so price gets a candle close outside of the range remembering again we we were expecting this to break up here because it went from the up upwards movement sideways up so again what we're we doing here upwards movement sideways favor and up okay so price gets a candle close outside of the range here we get a close outside of the range and you will see this perfectly by the way absolutely perfectly on a lower term time frame and you can tell here by the wick but you did in fact close above back test to the dollar literally and then you got expansion to the upside again so this is a move and this is where you expanded to 13 uh, the, the high of the move so about the high 13k okay so this was the the expansion that led you there um you basically pretty easy got in uh, a, a trade from you know closing outside the channel back testing it perfectly and then it expands obviously upwards there so um here price gets a candle close outside the range and then back test the channel range resistance as support for another impulse wave upwards a perfectly traded channel so what could you say here okay for a little bit of extra confirmation if you don't want to long the back test okay you could have seen the high back test not long the back test until you take out the high of that candle so here you have to hide a candle so you back test and then you could just long here really okay you could long there and then or in the end you get a bit lucky this doesn't always happen but in, in the end you even back test that high and then move up so you don't always this is uh not always i would be very cautious this would be the entry but here you get very lucky um 
getting another potential compounded trade so you could even add to your long here that would be an add to a long and then you you know you expand again but you don't you got pretty lucky with the people getting that opportunity of a nine five back test like so perfect um so yeah that's obviously uh sideways ranges where you get an old channel where mainly we were looking here at an old channel flipping into support again and then you trade and this is really really perfect by the way so remember this channel this was a perfectly traded channel and then look how it come back in so this is the channel that we were just reviewing in this slide so this is the channel what happened so perfectly here price obviously broke up from 95 and went all the way up to uh, you know your high 13000s and what did it do it consolidated but absolutely perfectly this is why you do not remove a channel the old channel that was formed here, look where price retraced to from the very high, okay? It retraced down to your middle of your parallel channel. Just absolutely perfect. So here you can see the sideways channel, okay? The sideways channel prior to cons the consolidation that led to the big move to the upside, and it really did, okay? It led to that big move to the upside. And then where you come down, price moved away. So obviously this is all moving away, but price eventually okay came back okay into i want to step start saying okay price has moved away but then uh but away from the <laughs> price has moved away from the uh channel resistance but when price retraces it can find support from an old channel so our old channel price moves away but eventually it takes its time but it does eventually come back into it and back tests here the midpoint you could have looked for the low or the high but around this region Obviously, here you find it at the midpoint. What do you see here? Really, really nice. Really nice. You see a move down, a bullish engulfing candle. So here you'd be looking to take your long after that bullish engulfing. You get very lucky then again with a, uh, a long lower wick. Okay, so this would be a buy signal, this bullish engulfing, or this long lower wick. Okay, another bullish sign. But look where you, you bounce here. You obviously bounce off the top of the channel. So then you've seen a, a low, high, high, low, and then you're obviously moving on. Where do you move up to? So let's just, just highlight this for the sake. Where do you, what do you do? You literally move up, take that high, <laughs> take the high here. Okay. And uh, yeah, then you come back down. Okay. Where do you come back down to? You come back down to the top of the channel. Support, 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 long, lower wick. Okay. Price again, finds support on the midpoint of the old parallel channel, the exact midpoint here. And then again, you see support, support, long, lower wick. And then you see support, 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 holding. And then you start going low, high, higher, low, higher, high, higher, low. And then you expand again to the upside. Okay. So this is why you don't remove a channel from your chart, basically. Because these old channels, okay, you might think, uh, you might forget about them after two weeks. But you'll be surprised how often they come back into the market, especially the sideways channels. Okay. So I'd say sideways channels are more. But, um, you know, you still will see you know um sloping channels but they're not as respected so these sideways ones are perfect okay especially if it's a longer range so if this was like a daily range although this was an, uh, only an hourly one but if it was a big daily one then it would be more relevant okay so just remember that too uh, a higher time frame you know if you have a one minute channel okay and you're trading it for 10 minutes in the day then you're not really going to expect it to be respected again <laughs> you know but if it, if it is something here appearing for instance on the four hour then you know it's clearly going to most likely be coming back into again interaction again so just remember the higher the time frame the more respected and all that uh, but yeah, that's obviously our, our channel here. Uh, so moving on to the next uh, slide I've done for you all. So here, this is, uh, okay, so this is an example of when to, you know, the expecting a move down or move up. So here we have an upward sloping channel. It's it's not, so at the, at the first point, it was really perfect. And I just wanted to add this in because this was recent price action that we had on Bitcoin. Okay, and here it was obviously, so this was from the move of that 10,200 down to uh, 10,3. So this was that move down, okay? And it obviously was very, very choppy. So as we moved down here to the low 9,000s, it was it was pretty choppy. It was, um, yeah, I would say it, it was it, it hard, one of the hardest uh, trading places, okay? Because it was just so choppy. It, it really was. I was finding it difficult as well, okay? Because it was, it, it was nice, but then we start seeing these deviations. It just adds a lot of... Uh, you know, it's not the best trading environment. I just, I would just literally trade something else. But um, here we go, go from low to high to low to high, and it becomes very choppy. And what we can see here is channel support up to the midpoint, partial rise. You come back down to uh, support, back up to the midpoint. Like this section is perfect, but then you drop down here. You drop down. You do take out some lows, but you you drop down, and then you start finding resistance on old channel support flipping then to resistance so you're in conflicted minds aren't you you're thinking 
okay, we're, we're grinding up here, but we are grinding up against support, flipping to resistance. So it's, it's, it's a very difficult long to take, I would say. Like, it is. Um, I wouldn't, I would, I'd be very cautious of longing this. Or in fact, I probably wouldn't long it, okay? So here what we see is support, okay, because it's a flip of the, uh, uh, you know, trend line channel, whatever you want to call it here. Like support when lost, flip to resistance, but grinds along the bottom. It is not a buy. You would not be buying this touch, this touch, this touch, this touch, okay? This touch, obviously, you, you see a high wicking rejection, but you do, in fact, move down. You start going lower, higher, higher, low. And what were we waiting for? Well, this is obviously what we were seeing. These candle closes, okay? Or oh, let's just draw that a little bit better. You know, you, you eventually get above it, okay, with a bit of bullish market structure. And then what do you do back here? You then do get back into the range, okay? So price closes back inside and on the five minute time frame gave a perfect retest. So here, okay, this was on the 15 minute chart, but on the five minute you did also see close back inside, drop down, and it did come up to the midpoint of the channel. OK, and then, you know, you could have just missed this trade. It doesn't matter. Midpoint. And then you are closing back inside the channel. And as you'll know, this ran up to 10,000 mid 10,000s. OK, so mid 10,000s you ran up to here. Uh, high 10,000s. Yeah, high 10,000s. 10,968 if I, memory serves me correctly. But we obviously we saw expansion of the upside here. But this channel was very, very, very choppy. So this is a tip that I'm going to give you all. Uh, although, yes, we were back inside the channel. What gave me the signs or, or, or what really helped me decipher uh, to go into this day trading long? OK, so although I was still in a short, so I was still in a short at this point from an overall, obviously, from that 10,200. I was still in that short trading my stops, but um, I w was hesitant to to uh, close out on my short at this point because price wasn't really wasn't proving to me on a on a swing trade perspective to give me a reason to close out at this point. OK, because it was looking very bear flaggish. OK, so you're just expecting this to come up here and move down again. What helped me take that day trading long? It was flipping this into a line chart, okay? Um, and this is, is is sometimes where you're going to see where this is obviously so crazy hard to trade. Like, uh, it's pretty hard to trade, okay? So what can you do when you're just seeing long lower wicks, long high upper wicks, you know, bit, bit choppy price action? Flipping to the line chart is going to be really helpful. And this was one, literally, again, you can see it was a live trade that we took. Because what did we do to find that bullish bias? Okay, reason to be looking for a long. Flipped it to the line chart. And what we can see, it was perfectly channeled. It did go from low to high to low to high to partial decline to break out of the channel to back testing the channel. Okay, and then obviously what we saw from that was breakout back test and it did expand heavily to the upside. And this is what you're going to find that flipping to a line chart can be very, very helpful, okay? And a lot of the time in the day, I will flip to the line chart because it does block out a lot. Of, uh, only if it's choppy, really. I, I wouldn't generally do it unless I'm seeing real chop action. And then swipping to this line chart is, is, is very um, beneficial, okay? Where sometimes it won't add any extra help. And you then if it, if it doesn't add any extra help, then you would just say, well, I'm not going to trade. If I have no edges of trade, I'm not just going to trade to trade. I, I only want to trade if the odds are in my favor. But um, here what we can see is low, low, high, low, high, partial right, partial decline, sorry, back up to the top, breaking out those tops, back testing, and then you obviously got that expansion to the upside. So that was expansion straight through. And this was obviously a, in a, a short squeeze quite scenario where you expanded so up very quickly okay so you you went through all resistance very very quickly because people were trying to jump in shorts or people trying to short the exact bottom uh you know never works out people shorting down here clueless because you don't do that but um you know they in the end it got a short squeeze and price ran up pretty heavily and in the end gave another sh gave another short but um yeah that's that was just a nice i wanted to add in here of use the line chart if you are finding ch ranges choppy this is a good way of getting some clarification or, uh, um, you know, just a way of, of managing the, that chop, essentially. Um, so moving on. Oh, this is another example. So this was another example from... So this was yesterday's trade. And I'm going to cover this all for you in a second. It was so perfect. So perfect. And, like, these are calls that I do in the group, you know, before it's all actually happened. And now, we're obviously, we're looking at it in hindsight. But I'm, I'm trading this live, like, literally for everyone to see. But um, here, we're obviously, we're going from high to low to high to low to high to low to high. Okay. And what we can see here is it's a little bit choppy, isn't it, on the... Uh, on the candlestick chart but when you come over to the line chart it really was clear as day high low so what do you see here take out the highs <laughs> take out the highs to get your high to low to partial rise to low to lower high 
to low, lower, low, lower, high, lower, high, lower, high, fall off a cliff. Okay, or fall off a cliff weekend down to about 9,800. But, um, you know, you, you, you were using this channel yesterday, and this is why I was in a short. Or, or actually, I want to cover this in a, in a few minutes, that trade, because it was perfect. And I told everyone I'd cover it today. So I will cover this in a second in more detail. But um, this was a, a question that I really wanted to cover. OK, of actually. Um, yeah. So. Um, but a bit, a bit, a bit of that. Yeah, I'm going to save that one. Actually, I want to I want to cover this trade. I, I really want to cover this trade because this is re going to be really, really beneficial. OK, of. Well, actually, I'll do the slide first. I was going to do the the other way around, but we'll do the slide first of of when to adjust or not to adjust a trade of a break, okay? Or a break of a channel, okay? So when to or not to adjust a channel after a break. So what we can see here is a break and a break. Are we moving our channel upwards here after the break? Okay, so this is what I want you to think. So price closes outside of the channel here, but I would not be longing the close OK, outside of the channel until it makes a higher high. So what we can we say here is a pivotal high and it's also a pivotal sideways level, isn't it? So we can also see it's a pivotal sideways level on this region. OK, so until price moves up here is not until I would take my long at this point. OK, just one reason number one. And if price did do that, then we could leave the channel as is and say, yeah, that was a, a break. OK, but closing outside of the channel is not considered bullish just because you close outside of the channel. It's not really bullish until you take the last high. OK, and this could just be the last high of the move this high. Even it could literally just be this high. Really, this is where a little bit of discretion is coming in. There's not a hard rule of which high you're looking at, but obviously the cl clearest high is up here. But then you are missing a too much of the move, I would say, if, if this was, but, you know, if you, you know, I just look for the last high. OK, which is either going to be this one because of the price action horizontally or this one being the last high of this drop down. OK, so it's a little bit of discretion trading. But um, here we could see one, two, three highs. I would say this is going to be your most important one. Uh, so here you you wouldn't, you know, really be bullish just because you close outside of the channel. It's not really bullish until you either back, unless you back test and then take the high back testing and just going down like this, like it done is obviously not bullish. So what do we see here? It broke out of the channel. OK, so this is why. OK, so when to adjust. So if you had broke out of the channel, back tested, move up, taken the high, leave the channel as it is, because that is then a bullish break from the channel, isn't it? If you break out the channel, sort of back test or break out the channel and take a new high, then it's obviously bullish. OK, so what do you see here again? So we broke out the channel here. We're breaking out the channel, aren't we? But what did we not do? Price did not take the high. So although you broke out the channel, it's not bullish. It is not bullish unless you do that, unless you take out the last high or you come and back test, hold, and then you take out that high. OK, so you, you want to see highs taken. If you just come down, lower high, lower high, lower high, lower high, lower high, lower high, lower high. It doesn't matter if you're outside the channel, if you can't even take a high. So this is what happened. Price broke out the channel and I this is when you do adjust it. So I am adjusting my channel when I can clearly see that a new high has formed really nicely and you're back inside. OK, so as seen here, price closed outside of the channel, obviously here. But I'm, 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 if it had back tested and moved up, I would have left the channel as it is. Why have I adjusted the channel? Because we obviously saw then a rejection, rejection and back inside in a series here of lower high, lower high, lower high on this red, lower high, lower high, lower high, lower high, lower low. OK, so there is zero bullish. OK, for it to be bullish break outside the channel, you want to see follow through. What's follow through? It's moving up and taking those highs. OK. So when price closes back inside the channel lines, we can adjust. OK, so once we've seen this closing back inside, which would be the original channel, once we've seen cl price close back inside, move those channel lines up. OK, and you will see that this yesterday did then, in fact, still give a perfect top resistance. OK, so when price closes back inside the channel, we can adjust the, the channel to fit the new boundary as shown. OK, thus we are only adjusting channel lines if the channel is broken with no higher highs and bearishly comes back inside. OK, so that's when we're adjusting it. OK, so I hope that cleared up that as well. So uh, that is it for the uh, part two. And we still have got part three, by the way, which is next week. So there's even more to cover, like there is so much more to cover. Uh, so this is why I'm debating part three and part four, but at least and part, part three next week where there's even more to learn on this uh, because we're just getting started. It's, it's so good. Um, but yeah, part three is going to be next week. But that's it for part two of the channels. And now I would like to go through a few examples 
really, I would just like to cover my trade from yesterday. Why this was so nice. Then obviously today, again, we also had a really perfect trade. <laughs> so I'm, I'm still in a long, by the way. So I'm in a long from here. So, what? I, well, let's say, firstly, I'll explain why I'm in that long. Okay, because we saw here parallel we saw a 618 okay so 618 and also the fact there was the bottom of this channel lining up with the 618 so i'm in a long didn't get the, the very low and this is what people like stress about like i don't want to get the exact low so i'm in a long for no 65 and although i didn't get in at the exact bottom and i could have but never mind I, I literally don't care at this point profits profit um but yeah so uh what have we seen here actually also this is pretty interesting so during the stream now we have taken that high um <laughs> Isn't this typical? Like each one of these is a scope, by the way. This is like now, uh, I should, yeah, I'd, I'd need to take profit on that because that's obviously uh, a reason to be taking profits. But I want to cover this trade yesterday. And this was obviously one that I posted in the group and it was very, very transparent. I was in the short and we were trading this whole channel the whole day. So what can we see here? What can we see? So this for me was a original entry. And this is, by the way, covering uh, because I said to the champions group, uh, that I will cover this trade in the stream because there were people who were just amazed by how good it was, basically. <laughs> but it was literally really, 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 very good. So um, what did we see here? So I entered into position at 10.30 at night. Okay, so this is 10.30 at night. I was entering into a short while price was down here at around 10.2. Okay, so what am I looking for here? Okay, so what was I looking for? Why did I enter? 10,383 was my exact entry, wasn't it? So what why, what made me want to enter into a short? Thinking price is going to come up. So why was I thinking price is coming up here while, while we're sat at 10,200? What's the average trader doing at 10,200 after this move down? Oh, they're shorting at the bottom here. You, you can be fairly safe. They're shorting and they, they, they don't think of shorting on moves up. They, they every, you know, newer traders, I, I don't want to be mean, by the way, but it's true. Like newer traders, they'll, they'll short when something goes down and they'll long when something goes up. And that's not what you want to be doing. OK, we short when things go up and we long when things go down. But, uh, you know, the reason why I was happily placing my shorts here, OK, was basically I was expecting a move up. What did we have on this move up? We had the highs here. I All I wanted to see when I when I was placing my shorts down here. I was placing 10,383 because all I wanted to see was a move up, take the high and, and reject. OK, and obviously me waking up at price down here, it done exactly that overnight. We did get move up. We saw the rejection. We did see a low. And luckily I was asleep during during this movement, so I didn't even have to worry about it. But we did see a rejection move down and then a, a series of more rejections and then in the end moving down. What was confluence of a reason why I entered that position at that price? Well, if we take our fibs here from high to low. OK, we also had coming in around here from the 0.5 to the 618. My stop loss was very simply, OK, using this high. OK, so that's where I wanted to run these highs, wanted to run these highs for the liquidity, but not the overall. This was my invalidation for a stop loss, because if I'm asleep, I don't want to be waking up and seeing prices 20K. OK, I want to have an invalidation still. And so this was one for me shorting these highs, taking that liquidity and then push it to the downside. And that's exactly what it did. Waking up. OK, so I'm waking up around here, adding to my short as I see, wake up and see that we had then formed our parallel channel. So from high to low to lower high, lower high, lower high, lower high, lower high. I managed to wake up here and get into a short or add to my short uh, to in, in the end play that nice breakdown. But here we go short short and this is where there was some confusion of whether we were adjusting our channel here and you can see the uh, notes that i've made on this section uh but what we can see here is that's that was an important high series of lower highs here so we can in fact adjust that channel can't we we can adjust that channel and you can still see it trades very nicely from high to low to partial rise partial rise partial rise so this is bearish isn't it if you're just making lower high lower high lower high lower, it's bearish like Really clearly downtrending. So here we are going down, 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 down. This could have been potentially we would be looking at a breakout side back test. But because you just go lower, high, lower, high, lower, high, lower, high, there's nothing bullish there, is there? So we can then, as price comes back into the range here, so it's at the very end, but you come back in, you can move that channel down. And then what you will see is obviously price is coming down. This is where you need to go on a lower term time frame to really see this. 
but you start to see price coming back inside here okay no buyers show up at the bottom wick obviously we'd, we'd already seen the three valleys one two three reaction okay so that's another bullish pattern here uh you know it's all bringing it all together so that was the reason of longing but you know you see three three lower wicks rise where do you rise up to that trend line resistance lower high lower high lower high lower high back inside and you flush down where did we find support today today's trading has just again been perfect like people i don't know like literally uh, this is so good uh what did we do we literally went from the bottom here to the top okay where are we closing shorts all the time you're not getting greedy and aiming for nine two you are closing your short at a golden pocket what did we do hit the exact bottom of the golden pocket which is also a psychological number 9900 here and we saw a very nice reaction overnight okay where we then came from golden pocket up to the highs here of 10280 i'm not going to lie that's a hard trade to take okay getting in a short up here that's a hard one but um you know you know in hindsight it's pretty easy but i was luckily i was asleep during this so i didn't <laughs> manage to trade the top of this one <laughs> uh, for once but here we see, did see a move up Okay, but it was from that golden pocket. Okay, and then today was three other trade, two other trades I want to show for you all here because it, again, it was just so literally uh, perfect. So what do we see here? So this was then day trading today. Um, so then we saw. Okay, so this was my trades this morning. So I woke up and price was at 10k. I added, I, I I opened a short as I woke up, and all I aimed for was the low. Okay, like we've seen, like today, I've already given examples. On Sunday's Champions live stream, we went through it a lot as well. What am I doing all the time? Aiming for this liquidity, and it is literally working so well. So what did I do? Aimed, so I got it a bit late, but shorted 10K down to the lows, where I went into a long. <laughs> I've traded this so perfectly, went into a long. Okay, and what are we aiming up for here? This was just absolutely to the dollar perfect. Long okay up to the golden pocket just look how perfect it is you hit it by the way okay if we just move this sideways hit it to the exact dollar to the exact dollar here okay from high to low if i line that up perfectly because it was to the dollar six five perfectly absolutely perfect so that's the long traders even if you got into the long late you you see this long lower wick again through liquidity you know you, you're longing here okay up to the golden pocket and as i said this morning long up to golden pocket what do we do we hit the golden pocket that's then a short and what are we playing the short to okay remove that the short down from low to high here what did we get golden pocket okay so then you have that golden pocket here golden pocket here that is a confluence of fibs enter along this is the long i'm still in now from golden pocket okay so that is just absolutely perfect um and then again that's so you know few trades taken today and then we also had today going on this channel here didn't we before i forget about the channel we also had for extra confluence along the lines of oops ah along the lines of looking at this was the channel okay so we are you know again not perfect but we had along the lines of this helping structure the market from high to low to high to low partial rise low partial rise lower high lower high drop down to the golden pocket where we're closing the shorts in profit entering the long okay and now in the end you're a little bit choppy uh before i started this video i trailed my stop loss below these lows okay so my stop loss is is set uh, in profits so you know at the end it's been a nice day uh, and this is why i love trading <laughs> it's, it's literally so nice um so yeah, that's that's today's stream. I hope that you've enjoyed it. Does anybody have any questions? I will stay around for uh, 10 minutes or so to answer any questions that people have. Um, yeah, any questions? Um, <laughs> um, Dan, could we get a little overview of the present market? Loved the call the other day, you rock. Oh, thank you so much. Like, uh, yeah, so for an overview of, of Bitcoin right now, like all I would say is, is we are reaching the apex here. So I'm expecting a break to come this month. I really am. Tomorrow, let's just be aware. Binance is kicking out US customers tomorrow. There's, there's likely maybe more on altcoins, but I am expecting some major movement or, or not necessarily major, but I'm expecting movement tomorrow being the day uh, Binance is kicking out US customers. OK, but uh, BACT is obviously coming the 26th of September, 23rd, 26th, 26th of September. OK, so w I'm expecting this this pattern to break the 20 before the, the, this month, really, because there's a lot of confluence of why it should break this month. So I am expecting a break this month to uh, to come. 
that's either going to give us our bullish break or our bearish break, obviously. Uh, I am also really aware that we could fake out of this, okay? So, uh, you know, it would be perfect to uh, kind of come up to this high. Everybody turns extremely bullish and, and then kind of fall back down <laughs> you know it would be perfect it's the same here you know it could also happen but um although i'm aware that we could get those you know those sort of fake outs i would still trade it for what it is uh we also have what well, is really nice above here the golden pocket all i'm all i'm saying is i'm expecting a break to come this month but until that break comes it's really really choppy okay so we are just contracting in okay we are really contracting into the apex here uh I personally am only day trading. So I'm only day trading at this point. Don't get me wrong. I love to swing trades when we're in a trending market like this. These are the easiest swing trades. Okay, like this is the easiest swing trades. But when you're consolidating like this, and especially as you come closer and closer, like you can swing trade these moves again. But as you come in closer and closer to the apex here, you're not looking for swing trades because... Uh, it could essentially break 50-50 up or down. So you want to wait for that confirmation before you get your, you know, the probabilities on your side now. Um so here i'm just day trading the moves like today i've done you know i've not actually even lost a trade but you know here i don't want to concentrate on that i hate saying these sort of things but here we're just like day trading okay so it's more of a day traders range if i'm honest because it is uh high, not high probabilities on a swing trade right now so i am expecting this to tighten up even more okay so a little bit more sideways so for like an overview of the, pre the market at present i'm just expecting more choppy ranges just coming down for liquidity grabs all the time it's just real choppy you don't get me wrong i like trading it but a lot of people lose money on this uh, if they don't know what they're doing but uh yeah i'm still expecting more chop before an overall break up or down and i, I wouldn't say what way this is going to break up or down I, I would wait for that confirmation or or at least wait for some probabilities and I, like i said I, I wait for the market to show its hand to me not trying to second guess the market okay so you can make money uh on the short term without knowing where it's going on the long term like i can say i don't know where this is going up or down on the long term and I will day trade this until I have a reasonable uh, way of telling you, yeah, I believe now this is going up or this is going down. OK, but sat here, what are we even in? We're in the middle of this range. So you're even you're correcting this move at the moment. So there's no point speculating, in my opinion, whether we're waking up or down. Uh, I will prefer to give it another week, potentially, you know, who knows, one week, two weeks, three weeks, you know, break of this pattern. And then we go high probabilities aggressively into trades. Until then, I'll be more than happily day trading this and day trading means I have zero bias. I, I can make money at going up i can make money at going down i don't care um but i yeah i'm patient be day trading this only or sculpt trading this until we overall break the pattern not necessarily the pattern just because i'm aware of the fake outs that could occur really i'm waiting for that that sort of break above the highs and then sort of a break up like from here uh and then as you all know from that uh sideways channel that we also had so if, if it does we can't forget this one um just because we could still go into it uh, we could also just see this as a sideways sort of channel now as well. Okay, and this was obviously then taken here originally. So you obviously have the midpoint coming in, so you then could trade it up to the highs. Okay, and then for, even from the highs, you could come back down to the low. But uh, obviously, a bearish break to the downside is, is bearish. But to the upside, it's not it's not necessarily extremely bullish until you break over, up the overall high, just because you could still see this, you know. Breaking a butt out of this is obviously bullish, but um, you could still really see that occurring, or I guess even that, but less likely, but still a possibility. It's too early to say. It really is. Um, so, yeah, I'll just keep day trading this until a bigger break comes. Um, da -da 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 -da. Would you mark the last high? Would you mark the last high on the wick? Um, which one are you on about last high so like this high yeah for i would mark that high because that's still a relevant level for me i would like keep an eye on the candle close so that close it depends the time frame you're looking at here on the 15 10,185 obviously the high is important because that's visible in every time frame 10,281 yeah you'd mark highs yeah i would mark highs even if it's on a wick i hope that was your question if not then write it again uh can you have a look at xrp please um I don't generally take requests, but I will quickly take a look at XRP. It's not looking great. Um, so here we will really quickly see. It's coming down to daily. Um, basically, if you if you close below this, then it's uh, bearish down to around this level. Okay, so you are holding, you are on support. This is obviously the BitMEX chart. If we look at um, uh, a BTC. So I originally tried to long this, by the way. I did try and long here. And then what we saw in the end was... 
Uh, I was expecting a rejection, so I did say I was expecting a rejection at 0.5, but I did want to see this back test and hold. And what we've done, in fact, is is seal the rejection as expected. But instead of back testing and holding and moving up, we have in fact actually now lost that. So it's not as bullish as I as I was expecting, if I'm honest. Okay, we still though, as just shown, do have that support here. So the last hope is kind of last hope for XRP. In my opinion would be that. OK, so we'd want to see a move down and then back above. OK, that would be my last hope. If not, then we'd be moving down to around two, four or the lows. OK, so I, I was in a long on this and I did take a small loss on XRP. It serves me right for trading XRP, I guess. <laughs> but yeah, I, I longed it from here and took it took off at a point five. But I was not expecting it to just fall over like it has. And obviously BTC with its moves hasn't helped. But yeah, XRP, meh. Uh, last sort of hope for me would be this low. And if it closes below that, then yeah. I, I mean, I'm not in the trade anymore. But um, yeah, I'd, I'd get back in if it done that. Took the low and managed to reclaim uh, about 2550, let's just say. Okay, so XRP on the short term, not great. Unless you can get some reactions coming in here. It's kind of uh, not great. Um, think... Alts, if any, might have a smaller pump. The selling should be priced in. People have known for so long. Uh, in my opinion, uh, I don't think, you know, obviously I, I can't say. So it's, it's very, you know, I, I can't say whether there's going to be a pump or not tomorrow. In my opinion, no. I don't think, obviously there has been like 100% pumps on some of the coins in the last few days. You look at T-Fuel, you look at POE, you know, T-Fuel was up 120%. And these are like exit scams. So people are, you know, pumping to essentially get out. So you might see some tomorrow, but I do think it's very unlikely. I, I personally think the volume's dried up and maybe you'll see some Coinbase alts doing well. Or, you know, generally people are moving to Coinbase and different exchanges, but maybe alts will see a little bit of a reaction tomorrow. Obviously, honestly, I can't say whether they will or not, but uh, personally, I don't believe so. I am not trading alts bullishly at the moment, okay? Uh, so I'm not expecting a, a nice reaction on, on the alts, but uh, if they do react, then fair enough. <laughs> uh, I, I can move into some of those and, and sort of trade them a little bit higher up. I'm not, I'm not against that, but uh, yeah, as I see it, there's yeah, I don't think there's going to be a major pump tomorrow just because, yeah, I'm just not seeing it at the moment, okay? How do you trade BTC going into the apex of this triangle? Uh, day trading it, <laughs> just day trading the moves, each move as they come. So like today, I was like day trading from channels, trading up 618, 618s, you know, different fibs, different Elliott wave counts, you know. Um, yeah, just day trading it, find a setup and day trade the setup. And like the longer term is, is, is hard to get a, a swing trade in here. So basically how to trade the BTC going into the apex. Even if you're not comfortable day trading, do not trade it to, and just wait. You don't have to be always trading. Too many people lose money because they think they have to be trading this. You could be sat on the sidelines right now in no position and just wait. OK, go trade another coin or go trade another market. But, um, you know, you don't have to be trading this apex. You could wait for this to break up. Uh, or, you know, get some confirmation on a breakup or confirmation on a breakdown and just wait, you know, that's two weeks, three weeks of, of waiting essentially, or maybe it breaks tomorrow, but, you know, <laughs> waiting until a break. Um, but yeah, you don't have to be trading this if you're not comfortable. Like I'm comfortable trading it, but I know not everybody has the time, etc., to do that. Uh, hi, Daniel, I'm new to contenders. Do you have a guide somewhere to which exchanges you use you think are the best to how to link trading view to those exchanges to trade from the charts? If you do, thanks. Um, so I don't have a guide. I can do the answers really quickly and I can write something up. So I'm more than happy to write something up. But um, currently I don't. But the exchanges I trade from are basically BitMEX. OK, was trading more for used to trade more from Bitfinex and Binance, but actually not so much anymore. But Bit, BitMEX uh, for me, <laughs> BitMEX on this is obviously crypto. Uh, I like BitMEX at the moment. Uh, just just finding it really nice. The the prices are really real. I used to really like Binance, but since Binance vol volume dropped, OK, Binance has not been as nice for me to trade. And that's just because the volume is so low. Um, so I prefer BitMEX. Um, how to link trading view to those exchanges. Uh, BitMEX is really easy. XBT, USD. But yeah, mainly on BitMEX. Um, do you think Coinbase Pro alts will see an increase in volume due to you know, it's really hard to like speculate on whether they will increase or not tomorrow. I guess they, they should do because people are going to be going on to that exchange. But uh, I would say you're going to have to wait. There's no point in buying today thinking that tomorrow is going to lead to a pump on Binance coins or, or Coinbase coins. I, I would never trade like that. There's no point trading in hope. Uh, you know, you want to actually see if there's a reaction tomorrow and if there is great trade it long but if there's not then you don't want to trade on speculating basically or oh, this all is going to go up because it's the coinbase 
oh, it just doesn't make sense in my opinion. You know, look at any altcoin this year. People speculate on these things, and uh, you know, basically, if you trade an alt, if you trade it short, you make so much more money. <laughs> so yeah, I'd I'd be cautious because historically speaking, altcoins are meant for uh, shorting, I guess. But um, well, I don't want to say that. I don't want to sound like uh, yeah. I just just wait for tomorrow and see what it brings. I wouldn't necessarily just long an altcoin thinking it's a coin based coin and it's going to pump tomorrow. We really do not know. Um, so basically, low time frame channels can be seen as order blocks as a higher time frame. Essentially, yeah. So that's a good analogy that essentially, yeah, you could view a, 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 a parallel channel as an order block. That's a really good analogy. I like that one. Um, essentially, yeah, like this is, I guess, Chart Champions version of an order block. Um, yeah, a parallel channel view that as an order block if you want of an old parallel channel as you formed a sideways range would block into some people actually say i should write a trading book but <laughs> yeah I, I like when you see that tr sideways tr channel essentially you could view it as an order block as as you come back into it, expect reactions okay thank you for the stream no worries at all uh like to say what the other chris just said thanks for the stream it is truly a highlight of my week uh just gets me excited so happy to be with my extension of 12 months of the champion sub oh no worries chris um yeah i'm, I'm, I'm yeah chris shout out chris done a 12 month sub <laughs> but uh yeah obviously it's great uh i i i you know you know i personally i really like it now that obviously the group is also all joining in on the trade you know not just the trades but also learning uh you know doing the sort of the trades that I'm looking for. And, and I can just tell people are like learning uh, from me and like following the way that I, I, I personally think it's really, really nice. Oh yeah, look at this for a prediction, by the way. Uh, so this was my prediction, obviously from the short, I was expecting it to come to that 618 and bounce. So this was my prediction that I gave to the group earlier, come to the 618, close out of the short long. And that was the prediction and what happened. Um, my prediction wasn't too bad then. Come down to the 618 and sort of reaction. And now obviously we're sat at uh, 10,085. So we all saw that nice reaction. But that's a prediction and a half, right? Uh, <laughs> um, my bat trade yesterday was good. Fet stopped out. Yeah, bat was pretty decent yesterday. So in the champions, we traded bat. And bat obviously uh, was from a retest of this channel. So it obviously retested, moved up to the midpoint. And it's what we can see here from the low so we saw a deviation back inside come up to the midpoint and obviously we had also very nicely from the low to high here 618 held perfectly and we were also looking at this overall potential cup and handle which in the end fell down to the golden pocket moved up to the middle of the range where you 100 percent are taking profits and then well for me it stopped me out the rest of my position anyway but um you know now you're back down to the bottom of the channel again but yeah that's been pretty nice uh i've not uh, yeah um fair yeah i'm not sure i'm fair but yeah, that was a nice range one. Right, but that, that, that was nice. Um, you know, and that's just like those little profits in the day that add up. It's pretty nice. Um, cool. So if nobody has any other questions, I guess I'll see you either in the chat here or contenders next week on the stream or players watching this uh, in the next in the next stream again. But um, yeah. Um, thank you everybody uh, for watching today, and I will. Catch you next week. Thanks again, Daniel. More and more content. Yes. Next week, obviously, being part three. So uh, you think you, you learned about parallel channels now, but next week we're going to go over even more ways of how to trade this even better. So, yeah, part three next week. And I will catch you all in that stream. Thank you all so much for watching again. Uh, catch you all in the chat or wherever I see you next. And, uh, yeah, hope that you thoroughly enjoyed, found this beneficial, and you can start, you know, making some money with me on these trades. So uh, thank you, everybody. Catch you next week. And good night. Cheers. Bye. Trading. And this is just an announcement video to go along with those clips to say that the Champions Group is now reopened to the public. So if this is an opportunity that you have been waiting for, this is just a quick one, two minute video to explain the process of how to get in. OK, uh, so the first thing uh, I would like to say is obviously we've been sold out for a very, very long time. And the reasoning for me reopening it again is just because I've received uh, so much support lately. But obviously, since it's been sold out, I've just had people like knocking on the door of like really wanting a space. And in my most latest YouTube video there were just so many people uh commenting saying that they would love to have a space in the group um so yeah this is the opportunity you've been waiting for i guess and i have decided to reopen it um so yeah this will be a temporary reopening and uh yeah the process to do this is going to be all you need to do is go to chartchampions.com okay from chartchampions.com you will be presented with our homepage. okay from the homepage. 
all you need to do is click yes show me how okay and once you've clicked on that you'll be brought to the more info page where you will now see that the player contender champions are no longer sold out and you will have the enroll button okay once you've decided the uh, level that fits you best at the moment you can click on enroll now okay so if we wanted to roll as a champion all we'd have to do is enter our details and click submit okay and that is the process done you will now be uh you know have entry into our trading community okay what is a really massive massive bonus is there is already over 50 hours of educational video content um so yeah that is a, a great start already you can go back and, and <laughs> take your time going through those 50 hours uh, that i've already recorded for you all and then obviously we have two live streams every week you know going forwards as well so there's yeah there's a lot to look forward to and uh, all i would say is i really want to stress here is that this is not primarily a signals group okay so if you're only wanting signals this isn't for you this is is, is totally focused on education and me teaching you how to become a successful and profitable trader okay so this is really really an educational space for if you want to learn and have a community of like-minded traders and individuals all striving you know for that financial freedom basically through trading and uh you know that's the, my objective okay so if you are interested in that then yeah sign up uh, and if you would also like to you can obviously come over here and read some of the uh, reviews that uh, members uh, you know existing members have freely given here so you can come over and read some of this and um feel free to message anyone and you know you can ask them for their opinions too you know feel please do that it's, it's totally up to you um and yeah there yeah, i'm looking forward and if you are also looking forward to the opportunity that i've given here uh, of opening it back up then i will see you inside of the members area okay and you can come over say hello and yeah we'll take some trades uh so yeah thank you everybody so much and yeah i'll, I'll see you in the group cheers thank you bye <laughs>